Alright, so my name is Mike and today I'm uh, going to teach you basically how to take the old climbing ropes like this that you all have sitting in your garage that you're not climbing on anymore and turn these into something valuable uh, like a rope rug or a rope mat that you can stick out in front of your door or give to a friend. Okay, you need a small example of your design that you can reference during the process. You need a marker or two so you can number all of your points. Alright, you need a hammer and probably 20 to 30 good sized nails. So you need two to three foot size board. Okay, so this is what your board should look like when you get started. You've got numbers marking all of your turns and you've got easily identified nail points. Okay, so when you're working you can do it on the floor but it's much easier to have a tabletop surface around waist high. Alright, so this is the starting point. You simply want to start at number one with one end of the rope and start following through sequentially in order. So from one to two, two to three, and you want to keep pulling the rope little by little as you go. Three to four, we're going to follow three to four down here. Once you start getting around turn four or five, it's going to start getting tight. So you have to basically feed out rope at a time to allow you to make the turns. Alright, so as you're starting to pull the rope through, eventually you're going to come to an intersection. When you come to your, any intersection, you want to really take time out and make sure that you want to go over or under the rope. And you want to do that by referencing your diagram. In this case, I know I want to go over, around 6 and 7, and back over again. Okay, throughout this first weave process, uh, periodically you're going to have to extend out the rope because you have too tight of a rope. So when you extend this rope, you have to be careful because as you move it around, if you're not careful, what can happen is this rope can jump over another point and create a problem. If you continue without correcting that problem, you can run into big trouble later on. Now in order to avoid that problem of the rope skipping over, what you want to do is make sure you put pressure on the rope and keep it at the point of the turn so that your fingers keep it from jumping. So what I like to do now is to make it a little easier for the second weave just to kind of even these out. And one last thing that I do is actually just to make sure you don't have any mistakes I'll actually follow it through and make sure that everything alternates. So starting with this rope, it goes under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, and I'll follow that through the entire rope just to make sure everything lines up. And in this case, I can already spot one mistake that I made. <laughs> so to get back to this point, that would take me probably a good 10 minutes to undo it, and then another probably 20 to 30 minutes to get back to where I am right now. So that's an hour mistake. Okay, so when you get to this point, when you finish your first weave and you want to move into your second weave, the idea is just, of course, to go in reverse. And this is the end point, so in this rope, it's going to naturally just follow this. So you want to get to one end of the other rope and just start in reverse. You always want to make sure you do exactly what you did in the first weave. So this is over that rope, so I'm going to go over and under, over and under, and so on. Now this can get tricky because you have a lot of rope that we have to pull through. So the best way is to have it set up where you can walk entirely around. So when I get to this point, instead of standing here and trying to pull, which is much harder, I can get over here and just do this. Now instead of trying to find the end of the rope again, which is buried down there, um, I already have this point, so I just want to make a bite like this and then just run this through. So this point is tight. Now, step around again, just pull this way. Much faster. After making that bite and pulling the rope through, what I'm going to have in my hand, in just a second, is the very end of the rope. So now this time I can just start with the end of the rope, follow it and so on. So each turn you're going to alternate using the end and then a bite and then the end and then a bite. So another thing
thing you can do to save time is when you get to these short bites, and the short sections of rope, instead of pulling this all through and then pulling it all through again here in two separate instances, what you can do is just continue this on through. And if you're coordinated, what you can do is then just sort of do a double pull. Minus the twist, you can sort of pull both at the same time. So as it starts getting tighter and tighter, it gets a little bit harder and harder to pass a bite through because your gaps will narrow little by little. So by the time you get to your third pass, you won't have much rope left, so you won't really need to do the bites, which works out well because you wouldn't really be able to do the bites anyway. And you can see we're starting here, so eventually we're just going to continue on to the third weave, but I'll go ahead and pull the rope through for now. And there you have two completed weaves. So, now we just continue, and again, you can see that the gaps are getting smaller and smaller, and the rope is getting smaller and shorter. So at this point, I like to forego the bites, and just always stick with the end of the rope. It's much faster and easier. So when you get down to this point, I'll show you on the next weave, when your rope is getting shortened to the point where it only takes a few seconds to get through, Unlike at the beginning where we would just drop the rope and let it drop to the floor as we alternate using the bite versus the end of the rope. When I pull this through this time, if I hold on to the end of the rope, it just allows me to start the next line that much quicker. Okay, so um, what you may have noticed is as you basically um, do the first couple of weaves, it's, it's very important to have these nails in because it's really going to help you. But as you start getting into this third weave and beyond, you can see that it can actually become a hassle, as it does here. It becomes too tight and it causes the rope to twist up a little bit more. So right around the third weave is the point where you want to decide to go ahead and take out the nails. It's going to make your life a lot easier. You do want to make sure that everything lays flat and it's not all bunched up, because if you don't fix it now, early on, it's going to cause you a lot of headache down the road as you're trying to tighten up the entire rope. And this will work itself out in the end, but if you leave it like this where you have this big gap and you come through for a third pass, you run the risk of running an over-under problem and actually twisting up the rope again. So this is easily easy to avoid if you just go slow and take your time when you're running the second pass through and make sure that you don't allow the rope to twist under or over itself. So you can see now we're done with the rope um, and this is kind of what it looks like. It uh, looks kind of cool but still very big, open, messy, a lot of spaces. But you can see the entire rope, the entire rope is one big knot, one big weave. And you can see you got one end here and one end here. Next step is to basically take this and we're going to tighten it up so that we get rid of all this space. Once again, what I like to do first is to try to, almost like you would with a tennis racket, try to just clean it up just a tad bit and even out some of these gaps. It'll just make your life a little easier in the end because when I said getting rid of these spaces, that's kind of, that's actually kind of inaccurate because you're not really getting rid of them by by reducing it or tightening it, what you're actually doing is we're going to be extending this rope into that empty space and extending this rope into that empty space until it essentially tightens up. So how do you start that? So what I do is actually start at the corners so you can see right here, okay? So if you start at one end, in order to pull this any further, you have to go through the entire length of a 100 feet of rope or 150 feet or 200 feet or however long you have. But if you start more towards the middle, um, right here, you only have to go through half the rope to get to the end point, if that makes sense. So what I'll do is take this and just kind of pull it a little tighter, as you can see. You want to be careful not to pull it too tight, like this, because again, as we get through the whole rope, you're not going to leave yourself any room to fill in the slack. So pull it a little bit tighter. This part is, is easy, but, but time consuming. I want to pull it about that tight, maybe, is all. And I have slack here, and I just want to keep taking up that slack. 
And that slack is going to get bigger and bigger. So you can see right now it's only about maybe six or eight inches of slack. But you'll see by the time we get to the end of the row, it will have grown. So you can see this is that same initial tightening. Um, I still haven't gotten to the end of the rope yet. This is just a couple minutes later, but from that initial first six or eight inches, we've already gotten to probably probably four feet or so, five feet of slack. And in just a second, we're gonna finally hit the end of that first section of rope, which is right here. So now, we've just added six feet of rope that we have to now go back in and continue feeding. So now we're beginning the fourth strand and by the time this is all done, we will have four strands going through the entire rope once all this space is taken up. So now we're done with this piece. Can't do anything else with that. I just want to go back to a corner piece. You can see where this slack is. And I'm going to take this one. I'm going to go ahead and snug that up now and it starts with just an inch or two. But by the time we get to this end piece again, we're going to be back to six or seven feet. As you can see, we're getting tighter and tighter here. We're getting to into the fourth, fourth weave. Uh, we're probably halfway through the fourth weave right now. At this point, you can decide if you want to go, you know, you can tighten it up and just go tighter, faster, cut off rope, or you can go for a whole fifth weave. And we just continue this process all the way until it is tight and we're happy with the way it looks. Thank you.